Hello and welcome to Arabesque. What happened to the women during the Arab Spring who raised their voices against the oppression and fought alongside the male soldiers? Playwright and poet Kay Adsheed has written a play exploring and bringing these stories back to us. We're here at the Arcola Theatre to meet with her and some of the cast of The Singing Stones. I was working on a project called Theatre of Protest which was looking at the spate of global protest all over the world. I was working with young people um, who, were, who were actually exploring the student protests um, and then went into looking at the English riots, the London summer. And round about the same time, um, the Arab Revolution was beginning and um, I was very intrigued by it because we, our relationship with it was, a, was via the blogs really. And they were appearing and then very, very quickly they were disappearing. So it seemed to me that something very volatile, very interesting and very important was happening. And women were absolutely at the centre of it, very, very pivotal. And I was fascinated by it. And I created the first piece, which, is called, which was called The Women's Spring, which looked at Egypt and the women of Tahrir Square. And, and that really was the catalyst for creating this piece. Amen. Yes, your distinguished importantness. If I went through, one hundred dollars of the plea. What do you think would happen? Oh, right, yes. Well, one of your people would find it and be very happy. <laughs> Kay and I were having some very interesting conversations around that uh, dilemma that an artist who also sees themselves as an activist finds themselves. Kay uh, based my character on uh, a group of uh, dissident puppeteers from Syria called Masasit Mati. The way they were using puppetry to, uh, to really poke fun at the fear, to, at the culture of fear that was being created. And, uh, and this is how my, uh, my character came into being. I am between the sea and the long grass on the wide, white beach. I am so small and light, I leave barely a footprint. I am drawing with my finger in the sand, making great curving lines, drawing a cloud or a huge fish or just waves. I don't remember. Joining up the stones, some white jagged rocks bedded deep together, other pink speckled pebbles, singular, smooth and round. I am joining them up with my finger, leaving a deep curving line in the soft white sand. My character, Alia, uh, and her, her name is my name, um, is, uh, is a character who, um, if you like, uh, because she puts her uh, neck above the line, she gets uh, punished. The run has been absolutely fantastic. Um, I think political theatre uh, is experiencing a revival in, uh, uh, across the world, I hope. And this is what we're doing. We're doing political theatre. Um, and to have such bold forms also interweaved into it is very exciting. What's happening is that some wonderful experimentation in form has taken place and some really bold work has been done by Kay. So it's just been really great to be part of something like this that's, that's controversial, uh, that's not out there to pander to everybody's taste and that's uh, making its mark and saying, look, we're doing things differently and we're doing things that, uh, that matter and that are relevant. What if I blew out one hundred thousand dollars of the play? Oh, your unusually longish excellency. I thought it would find it. I'd be very happy. Excellency, excellency, I have a very good idea. Yeah, a very good idea indeed. Let's throw you off the play. That would make the whole country happy. And that's what you call a punchline. 
in order to be able to imagine how the world can be a better place and to dream of a, a better place, we have to interrogate where we are today. So it doesn't have to be politics with a capital P. It can be politics with a small p. It can be, you know, um, the, uh, s small stories. So really, when, when we're talking about political theatre, if you like, it's, a th it's the t kind of theatre that is not afraid to interrogate and scrutinise and deconstruct and question. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, a reflection on, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, upcoming elections and, um, and the situation in Syria and ISIS and whatnot. It can be that big and that's wonderful, but it can be also as small as human interactions and dissecting those. That's quite political as well. At the crux of the issue is nothing is worth has greater value than blood, you know, and when when people are dying, you can't help but question what, what it is you're doing and how significant is it. However, because there has been such a great movement of uh, artists from the Arab world who are creating work in response to uh, to such revolutionary ideas, which are not new, by the way, but suddenly the world is listening right now. Um, it just is wonderful to be part of that uh, part of that wave of artists. To see the uh, Arab revolutions and the place of women in the Arab revolutions reflected as um, a, uh, an interrogation of the place of women in the world in general is just uh, very affirming for any artist, I think. For all of us, we've just been feeling very affirmed that artists like Kay Adshead, established cultural producers, if you like, have been um, uh, joining us with so in solidarity in creating work. Two little boys, skinny, scruffy wee things, about nine and ten, were talking about the videos on the bus. Can you imagine? They had watched them. I thought I would faint or scream. I started to sweat. My head was banging, my heart was beating so fast I wanted to run off the bus. It's too awful, all of it. It's been so difficult and so challenging to produce a piece. I wanted to do everything. I wanted to tell all the stories. I wanted to honour the women. I wanted it to be truthful. But I also, it is not a verbatim piece at all. It is, it is a piece of, of creative imagination. And I wanted to entertain. And a lot of it is, I hope, if you come and see the piece, it is amusing and dangerous and controversial. And we're having a big reaction with the audience because people love it, they hate it. And, you know, and that's the kind of theatre I enjoy making. I want to make theatre that stirs people up and makes people think. It's just been such an epic piece to create this. And it feels like giving birth to a monstrous, ugly child that is screaming and crying and demanding attention. And I'm looking forward to kind of like, you know, pushing it off onto the motorway and me going off into a different direction and doing other things. Because I'm a poet and I want to write a selection of poetry and I want to write some short stories and I want to engage with the word. Um, and, then, and then come back and make more theatre, but, but maybe just take a little bit of a break from it because it's just been so challenging. All those poor, terrified young men, kneeling, waiting, waiting, and all they did was try to help. They're kind, good souls. They just wanted to make things better. And what about their parents? Oh, those poor parents, waiting, watching. How can they bear the world watching? How can they? And what about before that young fruit seller that gave apples to poor children and set himself alight? and all the women in the squares being stripped and flogged and tortured and all the wee tots choked in the chemical attacks. It's all too terrible, terrible, terrible. My company is called Mamakia Theatre Company. We say we look at the female perspective of the big issues of the day. And within inside that, there is a small repertory company of actors, and they are called the Mamakia Initiative. And it was actually, I wrote the piece, devised the piece, specifically for, for those people. 
Women are not free any, anywhere in the world until all women in the world are free. And I think we have a duty as, as Western, privileged Western women. I'm so privileged to be, I've got an Arts Council grant to be able to work as an artist and to create work. And really when I was researching what was happening to artists in Syria, it really broke my heart and really made me feel I was in such a privileged position that, you know, you, we, we have to highlight what, what, what it is to be an artist in very, very difficult times. I mean, I, you know, I will go home tonight, a lot of the um, Syrian artists have been tortured and have been killed, and, and that is not an exaggeration, of course. I think it is a celebration of Masasi Mati, who are embl emblematic of those kind of artists, who are, uh, are courageous and they are ingenious in terms of how are they, they are pushing against the system and they are doing it with humanity and forgiveness, very, very important. And they are doing it with love and humour. Because if one thing I have learned about this piece is that violence gets us nowhere, actually. That all it does is we escalate more and more violence and it just gets worse and worse. And I think somebody has to stop and say, no, let's have a more measured response. Let's look at things. Let's respond in a different way. And, you know, I think women are very good at doing that. I think women are very good at going round the corner with, with issues and coming at different solutions with men. And that's really why I was so interested in making a play about women in the Arab Revolution. And that's what I hope this play is all about. I blame Blair. I do. I blame him. And I blame myself because I believed him. Not Bush, but I believed Blair. And I voted for him because I thought, well, he'd get us back in, would he? At least he would do that. But then all those folk marched. And he never listened. And he lied to us. Or misled us or misunderstood did he? I don't know which. But he killed all those babies. All those innocents. A hundred thousand of them. And now their brothers and sisters have grown up. And they've come to get us. And can you blame them, really? Can you? Can you? Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the show. Join us next week as we roam the streets of London to find you some of the best arts and culture events that the Middle East communities have to offer right here in London town. Until then, take good care. Mm -hmm.